Okay, so we are discussing in this video how to transform probability density functions of uh, random variables, basically. And uh, because it always helps to have a concrete example, let's imagine that this function g, which is mapping the real numbers onto the real numbers, let's imagine that it is uh, given by g is mapping any real number onto the exponential of that real number. So, uh, if you imagine uh, using this picture, what we have over here is the set of all real numbers, and this is already mapped you onto there and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to map all of these real numbers onto their exponential basically so uh, what you can imagine is putting uh, obviously uh, the exponential is always uh, positive so really what we're going to do is map any real number here onto its value here so all of them are going to go onto positive numbers so if this is zero here uh, basically these are going to come over here let's say we've got 1 somewhere, that's where 0 is going to go to, 0 is going to go to 1, and then all points, be oh, sorry, 0 is here, sorry, get, get rid of that, and from beyond, beyond there, all of these are going to go beyond 1, basically. So that's uh, what we're effectively doing, we are ascribing each of these real numbers in here, they're exponential, so we're giving them a new real number. Uh, so that's just a specific example, G, uh, w the formulas we're going to get where, uh, for G, uh, for this transformation, sorry, for this um, new probability density function are going to be generalised for any G, uh, which obeys those uh, properties of being strictly increasing and uh, differentiable. Okay, uh, so we now want to work out the new probability density function. We've done a bit of this before in the video on, what was it, uh, where we were calculating, well, oh yes, when we were uh, doing where well, we were showing that uh, those random variables were uh, they were dependent but uncorrelated uh, the, the normals so z and z squared we showed uh, we did a bit of this where we were transforming probability density functions okay uh, so the idea is this that you now want to find the probability density function on this new set so we want to find f of g of big x as a function of let's say uh, little y so, if we put the real numbers here, uh, which is our codomain, so this is the real numbers for this set here, and of course, in this specific case, we were only mapping onto the positive real numbers, but in a more general case, we could have a function like x cubed, uh, which would map you onto the whole real numbers, basically. So, uh, in the more general case, you will map onto the entire real numbers. So, here is the real numbers here, and basically, we want to know what is the probability density function at a point little y, basically. So, if we take little y, and we multi and basically we take a tiny little interval, uh, y to y plus delta y, so this is a tiny little interval, then what we know is that the probability density function uh, at, at evaluated at this value y times this, inter uh, times this interval delta y should equal, the, approximately should equal the probability that you're within that tiny little interval. That's all we know. That's what we want this to, uh, how we want this to work. We want uh, this function, if we, t uh, we want to work out this function, and all we know is that if we times this function by this little amount delta y, then that should give us the probability that it's in that interval. So, what we now need to do is look at this transformation g. Basically, what we've got is this function g which is mapping you from uh, another real line which is this real line here uh, which has we know what the probability density function is on there so if you give me a little x I know what the probability density function at that little x is so basically we want to use that probability density function along with this transformation g uh, to work out what the probability density function should be here so the way we can do that is we can take the pre-image of this little interval in here. So if we can work out, basically, if we can get a little interval, let's say, um, here, uh, in, the, in, this, in this domain here, and we can work out the probability of that interval using this probability density function, then we're in business, basically. We will have a function connecting this probability density function with this probability density function here. Okay, right. So the first thing to say is uh, that if we consider this function g, uh, it had two properties. It was strictly increasing and it was differentiable. So strictly increasing, we were considering the example exponential of x. So basically, if y, uh, if you have a point y in this uh, domain, in this codomain, sorry here, and we're asking what the probability density function of this new random variable should be at y then we firstly need to work out what point uh, in the original, uh, in, the, in the 
domain here uh, corresponded to that point y. And what we know is that either, because it's strictly increasing, either uh, it will have a single point uh, which was mapped onto it by, uh, the, by this function g, or it will have no points. So if it has no points, we'll just define the probability density function there to be equal to zero. Because basically, if it has no point in here that was mapped onto it, that means that, um, that, the, that basically its probability must be zero. So its probability density, therefore, oh well, its probability density must be zero, because there's no probability that you'll be in that interval, basically. So if I, for instance, have a point y, and in this to interval y plus delta to y from y to y plus delta y and I'm asking what's the probability of that and I basically take try and take the pre-image of that and there is no point in here corresponding to that point then basically that means that there will be if I make delta y small enough that'll mean that there is no point corresponding to that um, to that uh, no points corresponding to any points in that interval in here and uh, that will mean that the probability of this interval must be zero. Uh, so we'll make the probability density function there equal to zero. Okay, uh, so on the other hand, if you have some y here, so this is your y value just plotted a different way, uh, and it does have a value x which was mapped onto it, so let's say this is uh, g inverse of x, so the point that was mapped onto y, sorry, g inverse of y, the point that was mapped onto it, so let's say x was g inverse of y, Okay, so uh, we're in business now. All we need to figure out is how big does this interval be? Is this interval in here? Because the it's very tempting to say, okay, now all we need to do is take the probability density function evaluated at that point and uh, times it by uh, delta y, basically. But no, uh, the size of this interval and the size of this interval might not be the same. And let me explain why. If we take a little interval in here, which is size delta y, so if we go to y plus delta y, what we're then asking is take the pre-image of that in here. So we want the pre-image, we want to know how big is the uh, corresponding interval in this domain here. And basically, the size of this interval, this delta y, might not be the same as delta x, uh, because the gradient, the ratio between delta y and delta x, the gradient of this sequent line, might not be uh, 1, basically. So, if we make delta y small enough, uh, then uh, this will approximately be a triangle, and uh, the gradient, well, it will be a triangle, but uh, the gradient of this secant line will approximately be the tangent of the curve. So, if we take the tangent of the curve, we know that that is g prime of x. Um, so, uh, that's the tangent of the curve here. So, let's say this is g prime of x. So, if we multiply g prime of x by delta x, so this is, remember, this is dy by dx. So this is the ratio between the change in x and the change in y. So if we multiply that by the change in x, it will give us the change in y. So if we want to know what uh, change in x corresponds to a certain change in y, which is what we do know, we know the change in delta at y, uh, we want to know what change in delta x will correspond to that. So delta x is going to be delta y divided by g prime of x. But uh, x, remember, is g inverse of y, so let's stick that in. Uh, delta y divided by g prime of uh, g inverse of y. Because we know our point y, we know our delta y, uh, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to leave that this x in here. We want it understood that x is g inverse of y. Okay, so that is our delta, uh, delta x, basically. So, if we want, basically, what I'm saying now is if I redraw this picture, We've got uh, this function g, which is mapping the real line onto the real line. We've taken our point y, and we've had our interval, uh, which is of length delta y. We've now said we have successfully found a point in the domain, which is g inverse of y, which is a point which was mapped onto y by this function g. What we now uh, wanted, what we then just did, is we worked out how big is the interval in here, which corresponds to this interval delta y in here, and this delta x is we found is equal to delta y divided by g prime of g inverse of y. Okay, and uh, let me just move this up, 
And basically, now, if we want the probability of this interval here, it's just going to be equal to the probability of this interval here, because we want the two probability spaces to be the same. We want their structure to mirror one another. Um, otherwise, this probability space is totally uh, useless if it doesn't if it doesn't it doesn't mirror the structure of this one, because we want it to mirror the structure of this one, because the structure of this one mirrors the structure of this one, and therefore this one will mirror the structure of this one. Is the idea. Okay, uh, so um, we want the probability of this to equal the probability of this. Well, the probability of this was going to be this uh, probability density function of, oh dear, little g of x evaluated at y times delta y. So whatever this probability density function is, which we don't know yet, if we times it by, what we do know is that if we times it by delta y, it should give us the probability of that interval. But we now know that the probability of that interval is given by, uh, the, is equal to the probability of this interval in the domain. And the probability of that interval in the domain is the probability density function evaluated at that point. So that point was g inverse of y times delta x, which is delta y over g prime of g inverse of y. So basically, now what we can do is cancel these delta y. So I'm just saying let's cancel those. And what we get is that uh, the new probability density function of this transformed random variable, which is g of x, evaluated at some little y, which is a real number, is equal to the probability density function uh, of the initial random variable x evaluated at g inverse of y times, uh, divided rather, by g prime of g inverse of y. Okay, so providing of course that g inverse of y exists. If g inverse of y does not exist, then obviously this is just equal to zero. So that gives us a way basically of finding uh, the probability density function uh, of a transformed random variable uh, from the probability density function of the original random variable.